Hey guys, welcome back to Hacker Time Rugby. I'm joined by my favorite Englishman. He's riding high at the moment, I think, on that semi final win. Rich from Rugby Analyst, welcome. Thanks for joining me, Rich. Thank you very much, Zach. Yeah, we were uh, swapping texts, weren't we, over the football? England have managed to get into the finals of the Euros. Let's see if yep. they can go one more. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Um, but we are focused in on this weekend. So, obviously, another big game um, England versus New Zealand at um, Eden Park. Maybe just a quick, what did you think of the first game? Just a very quick summary, Rich, in terms of that before we get into the, the details around England. Okay, so very quick summary. I would say I that's the most I've enjoyed watching England for a long time. I thought they were very positive. It's mm. not like they just throw uh, threw the ball around either. They, you know, they kicked the ball in their own half. They didn't you know, try and run out of their own half, really, unless it was a, a counter-attack, potentially. Um, and they were very positive with the ball. They were looking to attack. They were looking to create tries. Um, but I'm almost not happy they lost, but I'm fine with them losing because if you don't mm. kick your goals and you know you can't have an international scrum at a high level, then you probably don't really deserve to win most of the time. Yep, no, I agree with that, and um, and we'll get into sort of the strengths and weaknesses of, of of this this team, and you've sort of touched on that. But if you haven't seen it already, jump over to Rich's Rich's channel. We did a little summary of the All Blacks. I gave my impression of the All Blacks in the lead up to this game. So this is almost a part two where we focus more on the England side. So go over to his channel and check that out. But go on then, Rich. Um, in terms of, we'll start with the areas of concern. You sort of touched on a couple there, but what are the areas of concern you have for this England team? Well, okay, so let's start with the scrum because obviously, you know, the old saying, no scrum, no win, applies most mm. of the time. Um, and the problem here is England don't really have any options. It's not like they can change players around too much because they're just not there. Uh, Marler is out of the tour, so he he's off and he was the one you'd say is, you know, maybe our biggest scrummager. Mm. Cole, the other veteran, he struggled in the scrum anyway. Um, and plus... Both of those guys don't get around the park too well. So everything rides on a young Finn Baxter, mm. uh, the prop with the face of a choir boy and, and the body of a prop. Um, and, you know, he has to face off against um, probably Ethan de Groot and try and go toe to toe with them. It's a, it's a massive ask, just a mm. massive ask. So that's my big concern. Yeah, and look, you know, we we sort of had this, this young All Blacks front row sort of had a trial by fire and, in South Africa when they were introduced. So maybe this is a positive step for him long-term to really be sort of thrown into the into the fire of the arena of international rugby and sort of see how you 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 perform. But yeah, obviously that's going to be an area of concern. So I think the All Blacks will be looking to really target in there. Anywhere else that you'd sort of highlight you have concerns with the single and team? Um, well, goal kicking, but I think um, Marcus Smith, he, he had an off day. He is a better mm. kicker than that normally. I wouldn't say it's his massive strength kicking um, or distance kicking or anything like that, but you know he is a better kicker than that. I think there were plenty of commenters who said that it's a tricky stadium to kick in. Is is that something that you think is true? Uh, I think it I think it is true, although... You know, I think it's um it it can be because it, the crowd's sort of right on top of you in that stadium. It's a smaller sort of stadium, a bit so it can be a little bit more confronting, I guess. But at this level, you expect those kicks to go through. You know, both yeah. sides. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm pretty happy actually with most other places. We're very mm -hmm. light for depth in the centre. That's a concern. Lawrence and Slade seem to be getting a nice combo, but Lawrence is he's a thirteen who's doing you know learning his trade at 12 and, and that was a big step up against the all blacks so probably one of his best if not his best game actually for england which we needed and slade's you know doing his best on the rush defense but he's not a monster hitter he's not a a lightning quick runner so and then beyond that we're really struggling so very light there you said you were light in the second row in the all blacks we're very light in the center mm. yep all right let's talk about some strengths then so where do you see the strengths of this team? Okay, well, back row is looking really balanced, looking mm. really nice. You know, Cunningham South, who is the find, mm. uh, he is a real specimen, big, tall, good in the line out, hits like a train, carries like a train, no, proper six, um, still very young. Then Underhill is you know, a tackling monster, an absolute beast, and then Earl's your explosive guy. So it's a nice combo. That's really good. Um, Tom Curry probably hasn't hit the ground running 
yet. They're trying him again. I wondered if they'd go somewhere else, maybe to his brother. But um, that's a bit of a concern because when he came on, actually, um, we dropped. We definitely missed that massive carrying of mm. Cunningham South. Um, and then just the other big positive is the, the intent, the attacking intent's there. And Marcus Smith, his strength is attacking. He's very creative and he's very quick himself. Mm. So you've got that danger. And then the back three is a quick back three, which has been transformed by a wing commander, George Furbank, yep. um, just completely changing his his form, really, from when he first played for England. He now hits hard. He's still mm. quick. He's got a kicking game and he launches those counterattacks, which is something we just did not have. Yeah, I thought he had a fantastic game. A couple of plays you mentioned there I thought went really, really well. So Cunningham South, one question I wanted to ask you, though, he seemed to... When he was taken off, I was quite surprised by that because I thought he was having a great game. Probably there was no obvious signs of fatigue to me, but what did you make of that sort of tactical substitution at that point? Yeah, no, I said it in my um, uh, match report. I said that I really didn't like it. When someone's yeah. playing so well and we don't have anyone like that, mm. um, unless you're going to replace him by Don Brandt, I guess, who's our closest big ball carrier, but not really. So you kind of taking away your big ball carrier. And I, I think it was just they wanted to get Tom Curry on and they were hoping he was going to be Tom Curry levels of the past. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, I think the first thing he did was give away a penalty and then he never really quite got into the game. So yeah. I think they were just hoping Tom Curry was going to be superstar Tom Curry from the past. And maybe that's wishful thinking, considering he's mm -hmm. just come back from a big operation. Yep, yep. And, you know, I think there's going to be a real, where I'm really concerned, and I mentioned this in, in my preview of the All Blacks with you, that I'm really concerned at nine and I'm somewhat concerned at 10. And that sort of combination for the All Blacks, I'm just, I've got some hesitant, hesitancy over because even though Damian McKenzie is, is, is nearing in on 50 test matches, not a lot of those have been done as a starting 10 in big international games. Also, Finlay Christie against Alex Mitchell. And I thought Alex Mitchell was outstanding in that first game. So, what do you think of your sort of opportunities there at 9 10, the, the potential battle between Mitchell and Finlay Christie as well? Yeah, Mitchell's had two really good games in a row. He he's not hasn't been completely consistent for England. He does have some off games. Sometimes his kicking's a bit off. Sometimes he can be a bit hesitant. But when he's confident like that, you know, he he's a class act. He really does have it all. He's, he's got a good kick. He's got a fantastic break on him. He's not a small guy either. Um the problem for that was when he went off, Spencer, Ben Spencer came on, who mm. has been great in the premiership, but literally did absolutely nothing. Just literally stood around. Like it was, I don't know what was going on there. Um, and we could, we've got Randall as well. Harry Randall, who is incredibly quick and good to the breakdown, but has um, not a very good box kick. Mm. So beyond Mitchell is a little bit of a worry potentially. Yeah. So would you like to see, um, you know, then persevere a little bit with the likes of cutting himself and Mitchell and play for longer minutes. I think that oh, seems yeah. to be an important, important sort of option for them. Yeah, um, yeah. If they're fit enough, I think Mitchell should play for the full 80. Um, yep. I don't see any reason taking him off, to be honest. And Cunningham South just go as long as he want, uh, as long as he can, really, because I, I think he is he is that good and he will be getting better. Yep. And then obviously I thought Mara Otoji was was outstanding. I mean, have those kind of performance been somewhat hidden from him recently or is that sort of, he's always sort of played at that level? Because I have noticed sort of a small drop. Maybe this was sort of more the Eddie Jones sort of era um, version of Itoji. But, um, you know, he was outstanding that first game. And what did you think of his performance and Martin? Yeah, really like that second row combo. It's big, mm. it's bulky. Uh, Itoji's not quite as quick as he used to be and he has had some dips in form, but... Yep. He was at his best against New Zealand. I think he was he was just so up for that game. He's played a lot of rugby. I don't <laughs> there was something going around before the tour saying he's actually over his limits. So there's mm. there's a kind of an agreement of player welfare, yeah, which okay. isn't a law, it's not a rule as such, it's just an agreement. And I, I think he was over it. But mm. if you can justify it in some way, like a longer rest, you can break it and a, and uh you know, the minutes he had left was kind of like a game and a bit, maybe. So mm. clearly that one's been screwed up and thrown out the window. <laughs> but um, Martin, Martin is just a big boy. He's only, you know, in his early 20s. 
He's yeah. going to get better. He's that big, nasty, counter-rucking, big-hitting, mauling-type second row. Yeah. Like him a lot. Awesome. So a lot of strengths, a few areas of concern. We've sort of contrasted both teams now on uh, on both channels. Uh, go on then. Give me your prediction. Who's going who's gonna to take it? Okay. If England can hold that scrum and not leak penalties, then they can definitely win. They can definitely win. History says they won't, of course. 30 years at Eden Park says they won't. But that my my head says they're going to lose because they're not going to win that physical battle in the front row. Mm. Um, and the All Blacks have had another game together, so they should be better. But um, it's I don't think it's it's obviously early days, but you know, like you said, Christie at nine is probably the weakest scrum half I've seen for the All Blacks, yep. probably ever. Um, which is really harsh, but I think that's true. Mm. Yep. Um, Mackenzie's still finding his way, and uh, we've we've got some genuine special players here, and they're playing a positive brand. So I think they're they're underdogs, but they've definitely got a chance. Well, how about you give us this one this weekend, and you can take the other uh, Euro final on uh, on Sunday, Monday. Uh, <laughs> don't know about that. Don't know about that. Cool. Well, Rich, thanks for joining me. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Really appreciate your time. Um, if you haven't seen his channel already, go over there to Rugby Analyst. Check out Rich. He does a lot of great stuff, but you know a lot of great knowledge on Northern Hemisphere teams and, and really all rugby. So thanks again, Rich. Oh, thank you so much, Zach.